All right, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodesh. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, in this lesson, I wanted to uh, deal with the topic of the last days. All right, and um, you know, we're definitely in the last days, as you can see, <clears throat> these last few prophecies um, start to manifest themselves, okay, which, uh, which means a lot of things, all right, really, it means that we are uh, pretty much at the, the transition of one kingdom to another, all right, as it says in the book of Second Ezra, the sixth chapter, and I uh, believe the seventh verse. Okay, it's either six and seven or six and nine. Let me just uh, confirm on that. Okay, because as of right now, you have these elites that are, you know, being, yeah, six and six and nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So <clears throat> these signs that the Lord gave us were of the end of the world, but in what sense? <clears throat> the end of the world in the sense that the, these are the signs of the end of Esau's age, the end of Esau's rulership. Okay, now one what these elites fail to understand is that they are actually pushing the ruin of the only kingdom they're gonna they're gonna uh, uh, have to rule, which is the the way things are right now. They're they're orchestrating the destruction of this current system to set up a new without realizing that in the setting up of their new society, they're not going to get to enjoy that rulership. They're not going to get to rule. All right. You are helping in, you are helping as a hand in your own downfall, but that's a beautiful thing to us because these are the prophecies the Lord said, all right, we would be seeing now before I go into these scriptures. Um, this is an article that was uh, put in the chat today and as you can see jp morgan sees gas prices hitting six dollars and 20 cents by august and we're in may right now what's that june july august this is about three months from now now gas prices right now you know some places are about um 4.99 five but now they said the national average is what like 450 right around there right so say by august which it could be sooner right but say by august the national average is 620 in some places it's going to be higher in some places it's going to be a little lower if that okay but six dollars for, for a gallon sorry 620 for a gallon who the hell is going to be you know <laughs> who because because that's that's the thing you got to understand that's almost double right if you were paying you know roughly like 330 350 360 you're close to double that if it costs you forty dollars to fill up your tank you're paying eighty dollars all right on top of that prices of everything else are going up so you see how this is this is gonna quickly become a problem for people now I'm gonna read a little bit of this article which says here, <clears throat> moments ago, we reported that the first time or for the first time in U.S. history, gasoline in every single state, every single state, for what? The first time in U.S. history, right? And this is this is one of many first time in world history, all right, uh, events that you're going to be hearing. <clears throat> That's why it's referred to as a time like never before. So it says gasoline is is every or uh, in every single state <clears throat> is above four dollars a gallon, while the national average 
U.S. retail gasoline price just topped $4.50 a gallon to date, also for the first time. That's up about 50 cents from a month ago. All right, that's about 50 cents from a month ago and a massive jump from $3.04 per gallon on the same day in 2021. Okay, so that's over a dollar increase uh, 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 um, in, this period, in the span of a year. It says, while shocking, in just a few months, these numbers may seem uh, quaint and quite low. And, and, and the thing is, <clears throat> here we are. You're seeing the things happening now. People are like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Look at what's going on. But then you go uh, uh, half a month in, another month in, and you're like, yo, these things are worse, man. Shit, last month was better. <laughs> you know, it says here, um, with expectations of strong driving demand, the U.S. summer driving season starts on Memorial Day. That's, the, that's pretty much at the end of the month, which lands this year on May 30th and lasts until Labor Day in early September. J.P. Morgan's commodity strategist Natasha uh, Kaneva warns that U.S. retail prices could surge another 37% by August to a $6.20 per gallon national average. National average means some places is going to be higher, some places it might be slightly lower, <clears throat> but this is the, the typical price you're going to be seeing. And if gas prices are going to be up there, I mean, I don't even know what diesel is going to be at, if there's going to be some. <clears throat> How is this possible? Well, as peak U.S. summer driving season begins, record diesel prices are about to take a back seat to gasoline. Whoa, ho, oh, shit. Toward the end of April, as the May uh, NYMEX uh, diesel contract climbed into uh, expiry or expiry, U.S. disease prices peaked at a dollar. Did I just say disease? Diesel. U.S. diesel prices peaked at a dollar and sixty-three cents per gallon premium to to a U.S. gallon. Yeah, good stuff. So let me put this article here in the chat. You can have access to it. It's like yeah. Well, that's a good point. That would be make it eight bucks at some major gas stations in Cali. Yep, yep, yep. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> uh, let me put this over here. All right, so that's the article. Um, so if you you know you want to read more into it, you can go ahead. I'm just gonna pin it. Uh, pin message. All right, there you go. So <clears throat> now with all this happening, it, it's becoming more common talk of yo prices are going up. Yo, this is happening. Yo, this is happening. It, it, it's not stopping. Okay. And, and, and we pray that it continues to go on because it's going to happen at some point. So better sooner than later. Okay. But <clears throat> the joy in seeing these things is understanding that these are the signs of the return of the Messiah being very, very close. Okay. As he said, these are the beginning of sorrows. I mean, did Yahweh Shai not say it in, 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 um, <clears throat> in Matthew 24? Did he not say that there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places and all these are the beginning of sorrows? Well, what kind of sorrows do you think that is? That's Jacob's trouble. All right. And on a global level, this isn't something that just stops and just ends and just disappears. There's got to be some, some pain felt. And though we're going to be in it, the Lord is going to deliver us out of it. Okay, this is the book of Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And he's always going to make it good. From the calamities, to the deliverance, to the immortality, to the kingdom to come. When we see these things, you know what we see? We see the kingdom a step closer. When we see... Uh, famines again, worse, these, these food, the, the prices, the inflation and the hyperinflation, we see the kingdom a step closer. 
When we see these elites come on here and talk about, yes, in the next yada yada, we want to do this and do this. <clears throat> now, you notice that they, 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 they're they talking about the problems, the problems of oh, inflation, the economy, the, everybody, it's going to be painful. That, now, that means what? People are going to depend on you to uh, bring a solution. And it's interesting how they started um, basically weaning the world off of, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> they started weaning the world off of the uh, uh, regular, you know, their regular way of commerce and, and into that CBDCs. So it's not going to be a shock if they come out and say, well, look, it, it seems that we need to start making a faster transition to the CBDCs because this place is just, it's, it's on its way out. We got it. We got to jump ship. We got to, this is, this, this is a possible solution. Okay, to these problems. That's that's the, the fastest way to get people to accept something new. You have to make it seem like it's the only way. But nevertheless, when they come out and they say things like that, right? When 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 people are doing videos of, oh my gosh, I went here and I couldn't do this. When you're reading articles of, oh, food riots are going on over here. Oh, the, these people are burning down politicians' homes. <clears throat> you got uh, uh, the army being sent over here these to us we see the kingdom a step closer because these things have to happen all right the lord has spoken it and he is gonna he's gonna do it he's not gonna repent and that comforts us because though we are in this trouble we will be delivered out of it because the same power that said these troubles are gonna come is the same power that said he's gonna deliver us <clears throat> so if the troubles are coming then that means what the other part of what he said is gonna be fulfilled that goes into Isaiah 59 and 19. That goes into Isaiah 65 and 13. Us being fed, us being protected, us being taken care of. Okay? And we're about to witness the the, the, the hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai on the earth. All right. We're about to witness the, the about to see the Lord in, in action like never before. Now the, that's why the scriptures say that even what happened in ancient Egypt, which when you even read about it, it's it's like whoa. Right. It's like, whoa. <clears throat> but it says this time is going to surpass even that. So the, the beginning of sorrows, I mean, these are truly going to be some some very wild times. OK. And and <clears throat> sometimes things take longer before they set in, like before reality sets in and you start to actually uh, uh, acclimate, if that's the right word, to your societal factors to what's going on around you. There's some people that are actually in denial right now. <clears throat> They're like, well, if I don't think about it, if I don't read about it, then it's not happening. But when it gets so bad, like when these things start taking a, a violent, a very violent turn very quickly, then reality is going to set in. That is like, yo, what am I doing? Like you might, you don't have certain people that are on their way to work and they're driving like everything is not, it's all good. And then it finally just hits them like a ton of bricks. Boom. Maybe they drive past their gas station. And yesterday they saw the price was $6. Today it's $6.20. So they pull over. They look at the price. They got their radio on. They're hearing, oh, you know, fires are being set over here. I mean, the country is in total uh, turmoil. And then it finally hits them. The gas is actually $6.20. Gas prices are actually $6.20. What the hell am I doing? Where am I? I'm going to work. They're not even paying me enough to pay rent. What, what am I doing? You know, and, and it's going to hit them. Like how they be having midlife crisis. Reality is going to start setting in for some people. And they're going to realize, boom, what's going on? And this is bad. Because <laughs> some people, it takes longer before they, 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 uh, uh, that 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 reality factor hits them. They they try to stay in their uh, normal routine, but eventually they're gonna change. Okay, they're gonna change. Like in um, for those who've seen the TV show The Walking Dead, when you look at Rick from the the beginning of the show to the ending of the show, or you know a couple seasons in, his character completely changes. He becomes hard. He becomes cold he becomes numb you know by some of the decisions he, he makes <clears throat> the mindset you know 
the the the, the things he, because of the things he has to or he had to do, okay, to survive. He realized that that old him that was in the hospital, you know, that was that sheriff. I think that's what he was. That old him had to go, and that's going to be the realization that's going to set in for a lot of these people where the the the, the you know the nice guy, <clears throat> the nice guy, the the guy who's you know I don't know the janitor, the guy who opens the door and holds it for you. He's not going to be that that guy anymore. He may look like him, but he's not going to be acting like him. <clears throat> and there's not going to be assurance of safety for 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 people. Save the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, wherever they are. Okay, it's not just going to be here in in Babylon. It's going to be all around the world. This is Jeremiah thirty and seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. See, so that time that we are entering, as we just read for the first time in U.S. history, none is like it. Nothing that has ever happened before. Is going to be comparable to this time. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, and that he is the elect. Meaning, whatever calamities come, remember the Lord is orchestrating it, so He always has a back door, an escape route for His elect. All right, He will always make a way for you to escape. But at the same time, we are we have to rejoice because our redemption, our salvation, is nearer than when we believed. These these end times these uh, I, I believe it was today or so you had the the public hearing of the the UFOs and so on and so forth because the chariots are showing themselves more and more and <clears throat> and ultimately the day of our deliverance is very very close and, and it's 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 uh, uh it's beautiful because when when that day comes there's gonna be like we don't have to push past that you know we don't gotta keep on going. <clears throat> that's the that's the destination. Um, Elder Apostle Aram Lob did a video on goal, right? The word goal, right? I believe that's what it was, <clears throat> and it went into like basically uh, 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 performing a certain set of actions until you reach that destination. Okay, so we we know that we're nearing the end of our 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 race when we see these things happening. And we know that once we hit that point, <clears throat> that's basically it. You know, once your house shot comes back, once those missiles fly, that's it. No more. You don't. You don't gotta go out to the highways and byways anymore. You don't gotta do videos anymore. You don't gotta. Not that it's a bad thing. Not that it's like a, a burdensome thing. You know, but the <clears throat> the work is gonna be done. Okay, you don't have to deal with with the 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 vex the daily vexations of of the world. Hearing some some madness every day. Uh, they 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 they're transplanting a uterus and you know all this shit. <clears throat> we won't have to deal with that anymore, and we'll finally be at peace. We'll finally be at rest. And now we're seeing, we're seeing that finish line that we have to cross to get those things, to get immortality, to get peace. You know, to not feel this 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 uh chains of darkness, these the pains infirmities, you know, wicked thoughts, just weakness. You know, that's where we are. We're, 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 we're in these bodies. We're weak. These are weak bodies. Now, we may have strong spirits, but but our spirits are not able to, you know, uh, move to the full capability because they're, they're prohibited. They're hindered by this weak body. So when the Shai comes, he's going to give us power. He's going to renew our strength. Okay, he's gonna break us free from these chains. I, and right now we're like uh, uh, prisoners who are who are counting down the days. Like we flipped the calendar, and we're we're finally at the point where we're crossing off the days. You know, we're not looking at years. We're crossing off the days on the calendar, waiting for our Savior to come and break us out. <clears throat> so now I want to get this here. This is a very good chapter. Ecclesiastic is the second chapter. And it's very exhorting, okay, that though <clears throat> though these calamities are happening on the earth, we ought to stay, you know, in good faith and hope and keep that hope alive because it's our power that's behind these things. And it's our power that's going to deliver us from these things. I mean, think about it. You meditate on the kingdom and we all have our own imaginations. <clears throat> we read the scriptures and we, we all imagine what it will be like. Now, we know according to the scriptures, that it's going to be far greater than that. 
whether you're old or young or where, whatever you are, you're going to be perfect. You're going to be in your prime for all forever. Okay. You're going to have whatever you want. The scriptures say, while we are yet asking, the Lord is going to bless us with whatever it is we want. You're going to be able to freely multiply and, and actually enjoy life. We're going to get to live and enjoy that for the rest of existence. Okay. For the rest of eternity. We're going to be in the power seat. No more answering to people. No more having to deal with, I mean, the madness that's going on here. Okay. We are going to be in authority and it's going to be righteous. We're not going to have to live worrying about consequences. We're never going to face consequences in the kingdom. Everything we do is going to be right. We're going to, we're going to experience freedom. See, right now, everything we do is pretty much wrong. You know, you do, you do this and then some way, somehow, Something hits you for doing that. You tried your best, but uh, it wasn't good enough. It's never good enough in Babylon. Okay? It's always a headache. It's never good enough. Every, there's always some news somewhere lurking to enter your mind that's going to make your heart jump. <clears throat> oh, Lord, this is this again. You know? Oh, man, this here. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's why it's like when you really think about it, your lives are more miserable when society's just running the way it is. But when all hell starts breaking loose, it's, it's a different story because the, the 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 temporal vexations that we have to deal with, we don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay? You out of a job? Well, guess what? Oh, who is it? <laughs> See? And at that point, you know, the Lord is going to intervene because there's going to be no other means for us to get delivered. At that point, we're not going to be at the bottom of society. Everybody's going to be dropped down. And now let's see who has the life the, the life vest or, or, and who doesn't. You see, we're going to start to see the, the, the payback for our investment, the reward for serving the Lord. The reward for serving the Lord. So that's why, you know, when we see these things, we're quick to report on them. Uh, talks about the MOTB, talks about the calamities, we're quick to report on it. Because it, it, it it's something that you know it, when you when you see it it makes you joyous because you know that you're closer. <clears throat> and what that also means is knowing that you're closer and knowing that the time is short. You, you one thing you got to make sure is okay. Well, we're close, but <clears throat> am I doing everything that I can to make sure that when we get, you know, when we get there, I can make it there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, am I doing everything in my power to make sure that? When the chariots get here that I've been so eagerly waiting for, I can get on one of them, right? You got to get to the finish line, but then you got to cross the finish line, see? So as we are excited and patiently waiting, we have to be doing what it is that the Lord is requiring so that <clears throat> when the reward finally gets here, we can actually partake of it. <clears throat> I mean, it's going to hurt. If the reward gets here and you're going to witness others partake of it, the reward that you've been eagerly waiting for, but you are not going to be able to partake of it because all you were doing was just, yeah, 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 let it come, let it come, let it come. But you weren't actually working. It's like um, the parable the Lord gave about the um, the laborers that were hired to work, in a, I think, in a vineyard. You had some that came at different times and you had some that came at the 11th hour. <clears throat> now. If you came, you were hired, it doesn't matter what time you were hired, and you weren't working, all you were doing was just watching the sun. Yeah, yeah, the sun is about to set. Woo, sun is about to set. Sun is about to set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep working, man. The sun is about to set. When it sets, we're getting paid and we out of here. Okay. The sun is going to set. You're going to be happy jumping all over the place. It's payday. It's payday. But now the the, 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 the Lord comes and says, all right. You, you were here since, you know, this time. Here's a reward. You, you were here since this time. Let me see the work you did. Okay, cool. Here's a reward. You, you jumping all around excited and shit. Where's your work at? My, my, my work? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, I started working on this part. And then, you know, because then the, the son, I, uh, the other guy, he, he came in. He said he wanted to work on that part. So I, I kind of let him work on it. Okay, so what did you do? Nah, cause I was um, I I I, I, I was uh, bro, that's not gonna get you delivered. You know what I'm saying? If you if you're here, 
knowing that you have work to do, knowing that there's things that you should be doing, but you're not doing it and you're just hyping up others, that's not going to get you delivered. We mentioned that. <clears throat> Cheerleading is, if if your lot is to do more than you're doing and you're spending your time, you know, not doing that, that's not going to get you delivered. That's not going to get you on a chariot. See? So as much as we're, we're eager and excited, <clears throat> we also have to keep in mind that we're still working. You know, uh, periodically, you know, you, you, you get all into it. But remember, all right, I still got work to do. And if anything, the fact that these things are happening should make you want to work harder. If the, if, if, the, if, the, uh, uh, if you're in the fourth quarter and the time is counting down, that's when you go harder. Because you know what? You're like, look, the time is counting down. Once the game is over, the game is over. I don't get to come back on the court and redo this. So I got to make sure that the time is running down. Now is my only chance to go as hard as I possibly can. Because even if I exhaust all my energy in this fourth quarter, that's okay. Because after the, the, the buzzer rings, I don't have to use that any energy anymore. I can recover. But what sense does it make for me to reserve energy in the fourth quarter? Then after the game, I still have energy, but I can't use it. See? So if, if the spirit is on you, the Lord is giving you the measure, the talents, use it now. Because when the, the Lord comes back, you're not going to be able to use it. In the parable the Lord gave, when, when the, the napkin nigga who brought back the one talent he was given, he wasn't able to now go back and try to flip that one and bring back two. No. See? So you whatever talents the Lord gives you, you want to exhaust it, ex use it. Use it. Whenever the spirit hits you, use it to where you're completely tapped out. That way you can at least say, look, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a mortal man. I'm not perfect. But the least I could say is I did the best I could. With, with what you gave me, Lord, I used it. I, I literally used it the best way that I could. You know, so so now it's, it's all in your hands. At, at least I've done the best I could. And hopefully, you know, you can grant me mercy for that. All right. So now I'm going to go through this chapter real briefly. Uh, and, then, and, you know, it won't be a long lesson, but just a quick exhortation. OK, things to keep in mind. Now, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter two, verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, <clears throat> prepare thy soul for temptation. And, you know, one thing I'll say, too, is when you look back and you sometimes you might ask yourself, like, damn. So if I wasn't in the truth. What in the world would I possibly be doing, especially at this time? <clears throat> you know, what, what, where, where would I be? What would I be doing of, of what, you know, of what essence, of what importance, of what use, you know, would become of me if, 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 if I was in the world? The Lord bringing us into the truth was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. And you're going to real, you know, you're going to be more than grateful when you realize that you know, the Lord could have easily, just as easily as he <coughs> decided to call you into this truth, <clears throat> the Lord could have said no. And, and as time goes on, you're going to see just how blessed we are to have been called to serve the Lord. And it's almost going to be scary how, damn, like we, we would have missed out on such a big blessing if the Lord had said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to call this individual here. You know, that's a scary thing. You got to think about it. You're not a heathen. The Lord could have made you an Edomite. He could have made you a Hamite. He could have, shit, <laughs> you know, he could have made you an Elamite, a Moabite, <clears throat> eating squids and shit, but he made you an Israelite. So that means that by default, you're going to get the kingdom. You're going to, you're going to be saved. You're going to be delivered, right? But above that, he didn't even make you a wicked Israelite, Lord willing. He called you into this ministry. So amongst Israel, you have potential to be among the, the chiefest, right? The prime, the first fruits. Think about it. How, how much higher can you go? You're not a, of, of, of all the nations, you're in the top nation. And even among the top nation, you're on a higher tier if you're in this truth, if, if you are uh, truly uh, uh, the Lord's elect. That's something to, to be grateful about and to cherish dearly. You know, it's something to always cherish and, and keep that in mind. And yes, that should put fear in you because that fear will drive you to, to, to want to keep that place, knowing that just as easily 
I mean, just because you're here today doesn't mean you're going to be here tomorrow. So you got to work. You got to work for your stay. You got to work for your keep. And always pray. It says here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yep. Just like hitting the lotto. Because yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> you know, so it says uh, verse two, set thy heart aright, meaning your mind, set your mind right and constantly endure. Because it's going to be worth it at the end. And make not haste in time of trouble. See, so all these things that are coming, we're not losing our minds because the Lord is with us. It says, <clears throat> cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. See? So that's what we're doing. We're cleaving unto the Lord. We started cleaving unto the Lord. Whenever, whenever the Lord woke you up, you start cleaving unto him. No matter what you may have to go through for that, but at the last end, you're going to be increased. Because not everybody's going to get what the elect are going to get. And that's that's permanent. That's final. That's not up for discussion. See? It says here, <clears throat> whatsoever, and, and when it says increase at thy last end, that's really what's most important. There's a song that says, it's not where you're going, it's where you're at. But really, it's it's not where you at right now. It's where you're gonna be. Because would you rather be rich now and poor later for an eternal state, or would you be poor now and rich later? I'll take the poor now, rich later. Because at some point, the painful part is gonna be when the the riches are dying and you are becoming poor. That's the that's your end result, and that's the worst part. You want the benefit, as they say, the best for last. That's what you want. Because after the pain, you can appreciate the, the, the joy and the reward so much, you know, so much more. But you don't want to have to go through the uh, uh, the joy and forget all about it because now you're in pain. Nah, dog. <laughs> uh-uh. So it says here, verse 4, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate, because the Lord is doing that on purpose. And it's not easy. It's hard. <clears throat> it's hard when you're in a low estate. It's hard when you feel weak. It's hard when you, you know, you feel helpless. You know, and you want to do something, but you can't. It's not easy. But it's what needs to be done. You have to be patient. You have to suffer it. Because there's a better reward coming that will never be taken away from you. That crown the Lord is going to put on us will never be taken away from us. We'll never die. Nobody will ever come and replace us. So whatever we got to suffer now for it, so be it. This place is done anyway. What's what's here? What's here that's left for us? You know? You got to cleave onto the Lord now more than ever. Because it ain't nothing here. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you wouldn't be in the in the furnace of adversity if the Lord didn't think you were acceptable. You wouldn't be going through the things you're going through if the Lord didn't think you were acceptable. Does somebody who's a blacksmith or a goldsmith or whatever, do, do you see them taking a pile of dirt and putting it in fire? Why, <clears throat> why would a, a silversmith take a pile of dirt and put it in fire? <clears throat> He won't because he knows, ain't no, what the hell am I doing? I'm wasting my time. This is dirt. It's not going to get purified. It's dirt. But he'll take gold or silver <clears throat> and that he'll put in the fire because he knows that this has potential. This is going to be purified. So the fact that you're in the fire means that there's something that the Lord has put within you <clears throat> that he is trying to refine. It says, believe in him and he will help thee, order thy way right and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your reward shall not fail. So we got a reward coming. And we believe the Lord. It says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting ever. That's, see, that's the part right there. Everlasting joy and mercy. Not temporal pleasures, but everlasting joy and mercy. Imagine imagine this, right? You're having the best time of your life. I mean, just 
there's nothing that you can imagine that'll make you happier. And you're having the best time of your life. And what makes it better is when you when you remember that this is going to be it forever. Meaning this is never going to have to end. The painful part about having a good time here is that it has to end. When you when you're with brothers, when it's a high holy day, you know, when when something good happens to you, it's good, but then you look at the end of it and it's, uh, I still got to go to work. You know, I I still <laughs> I still got to deal with this shit. But in the kingdom it won't be like that. You know, you you won't wait. Oh shit, I got to go to oh my alarm there. No. You're going to have the best time of your life. And every time you think about it, you're going to be even happier because you know, whoa, this is this is forever. It says everlasting joy and mercy. And, and this is going to be on a, a godly level. We're not talking. You see, there's one. There's a way that men celebrate. There's a way that men rejoice. We're going to be rejoicing as gods. I mean, imagine what level our holy days and our feast days are going to be on. Shalom, <clears throat> shalom to the elder brother uh, Manat Zakba. While all of you listening, Yahweh Bashim Yashai Brakatam to you all. Okay, imagine that. Because <laughs> see, the scriptures say how um, what, uh, even in our you know terrestrial forms, that uh, I forgot what verse it was, but that that uh, uh, we we were singing right. The children of Israel were singing, and it was so, I guess it was just so good that the glory of the Lord came down. You know. And now he said he's going to beautify us with salvation. We're, we're, imagine, imagine the notes that the, the, the musicians in the kingdom are going to be hidden. Hearing sounds that, that if you were in these bodies, you couldn't even process. You couldn't even begin to understand what, what am I hearing? Your ears couldn't handle it. So the, 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 the joy we're going to be partaking of is going to be on a whole nother level. A level that these normal mortal bodies can't are not even capable of ex exhibiting. There's probably levels of dopamine that that we can't handle if it was released in these bodies. But in the in the kingdom, the pleasures and the the joy <clears throat> is going to be, I mean, to a level that is unimaginable. Literally, is going to be something we've never felt before. And then being hit with the realization that. <clears throat> man, this is not going to end. That's a beautiful thing, man. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? See, the Lord never forsook anybody that trusted in him. Did Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So we're calling upon the Lord. Why would we be despised? He says he changes not. So if we're doing the same thing our forefathers did, when, when they were in trouble, they were delivered, why wouldn't we be delivered? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long-suffering. See, the Lord is not cruel and evil, like just he just doesn't care about it. No. He looks upon us. He sees what we go through. He has compassion upon us. So he understands when we cry unto the Lord, when we pray, when we're in, in hard times, and he sees all of that. Yahweh came in the flesh for a reason. So he feels what we feel. He understands. All right? And that's why it says, and very pitiful. So he sees our case. And, and, and you know, when you see somebody in a bad case and you feel bad and you want to help them, well, the Lord gets like that. He's very pitiful and forgiveth sins. And he has the power to do so. And what saveth in time of affliction? So when hard times come, no that the Lord got something for you. It says, woe be to fearful hearts and, ha and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. And now in this time, you can't afford to be faint-hearted. It's not going to be easy to make certain decisions, but you can't afford to be uh, faint-hearted. You got to know what you got to do and you got to do it. It can't be, oh, I know what I got to do, but they, no, no, you can't have that. Therefore, shall he not be defended? See, if you want to be defended, you got to put yourself out there through faith. You know, as the elder uh, 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 um, Yashuamba said, faith provokes miracles. So you got to provoke the miracles with your faith. You got to show the Lord that unwavering faith to where he's like, damn, if I don't deliver this guy, he's really going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. So it says, um, 
Because if you look at the three holy children, for example, they're, them having faith actually put them in a position where they, they were going to die if the Lord didn't do anything. Their only hope was the Lord. So their faith provoked that miracle. It says, um, verse 14, Woe unto you that have lost patience. For, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? <clears throat> you got a lot of people that came into the truth but lost patience. Okay? But when the Lord comes, because he's still going, just because you don't believe anymore or you ran out of patience doesn't mean the Lord is not going to make his return. He is. It says, uh, verse 15, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. And Lord willing, that's us. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts, which is their minds, and humble their souls in his sight, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. So you know what? If they're saying they're not going to feed us because or house us or whatever because we don't want to take the MOTB or bow down to the system, or if they want to come for our lives because we stand enough for what we believe in, then so be it. We'll take our chances with that than to, to turn our backs on the Lord. All right? So, like I said, this is a good chapter to go into, and it's very exhorting. But ultimately, we are in that time, all right? We are in the, the, the last days, and the last days are packed with faith testing, also faith boosting, miraculous sightings, and just prophecies, okay? And always remember that no matter how crazy it seems or how crazy it is or how wild of a situation you're in, this is the only time it's ever going to happen. So you know what? Just do it, okay? Just do it anyway. All right. It may be crazy. It may be hard. It may be tough. It may be like, damn, I've never felt this this way before. But guess what? You're never going to feel this way after. So you know what? Make the best you can now because your story is being written right now. Now, when you get to the kingdom, you're going you're gonna to hear about your story. Do you want to have the legacy of one who faced adversity and backed down or one who rose to the occasion and overcame? Think about that. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it with this. This is uh, to Zara Ban Yumyun, Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Always keep that in mind. All right. And Yahweh Bashem El Shai always has a plan for his elect. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. The water for tuning in. The water for the precepts. <clears throat> Yahweh Bashem El Shai brought a thumb to you all. And in closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.